Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm going to be testing the Radeon RX 6700 XT in Horizon Forbidden West. This one is the Sapphire Pulse edition of the card. We are running it with the latest AMD drivers and I'm not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power Ups, GPU Z, Resizable Bar or AMD SAM is enabled right there. And over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with half of its cores disabled. So it's the same as a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Over on the memory tab, we're using 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 6000 megahertz RAM in dual channel, and let's get right into it. Shall we? Okay, let's go for the settings first. I'm starting at 1080p resolution using TAA and I'm also going to test 1440p and 4K. TAA in this game looks really good. It's not one of those blurry implementations that we see very often, so that's great. And I'm using the very high settings preset without motion blur and chromatic aberration. I'm going to start counting our FPS right here and I am noticing here with the 6700 XT that the frame time graph is not completely 100% smooth. Like, it is a flat line which is nice to see compared to the Nvidia GPUs that I tested so far. I think Nvidia Reflex enabled on those cards actually introduced a little bit of uh, micro stuttering on the frame time graph which wasn't noticeable at all. It still felt extremely buttery smooth. Um, but here with the 6700 XT we have a flat line sometimes it spikes every once in a while. It's, it's not really doing that right now as I'm talking about it. <laughs> I wanted to show you but but okay, it's probably gonna happen in just a little bit. Still, this is a much, much better experience than the RTX 4060 that I tested previously in this game. It was getting like 50 plus FPS, sometimes dropping down into the 40s, high 40s at these same settings, uh, mainly because it was VRAM limited. As you can see, this is using 9.5 gigabytes of VRAM. So having 12 gigabytes on this GPU is definitely very welcomed here in Horizon Forbidden West. I'm, I'm really happy once again to see that this is such a buttery smooth experience with always above 60 fps because I, I was expecting it to be a little bit worse for some reason i know it's much faster than the rtx 4060 but i didn't expect it to be this much faster <laughs> Right? So yeah guys, it's kind of expected that this does so much better than the RTX 4060 because it always has, right? It's just interesting to see that they're closely priced, okay? Like you can buy this one, as I said, for like 20, 30 bucks more than the 4060 sometimes. And it's definitely a better deal, especially here in Horizon Forbidden West. And it's faster in pretty much all of the games across the board, which is nice to see as well. And also, of course, the 12 gigabytes of VRAM are just great on this GPU. This means that you can run this at the very high settings, whereas the 4060 was stuttering all over the place. This still has the little frame time spikes every once in a while, but uh, it's not really that big of a deal here at 1080p. I, I can't notice them, but it's not terrible. It, and it's definitely not as bad as the 4060 was because that was running out of VRAM. 60 plus 100% of the time is what you can expect here at 1080p resolution. Because of that, I am not going to test FSR here at this res. Well, I'm actually going to apply it just to show you guys. FSR is looking really, really rough here in this title because it has so much detail, basically. It blurs out and it makes everything really, really noisy whenever things are moving. And uh, it's just not a good look, in my opinion. If you look at Alloy's hair and the entire character actually it's really really pixelated and also the fps only improved by like 10 to 20 fps at most so uh yeah at 1080p just stick to native resolution that's definitely the better way to play this game also i'm gonna try a little bit of xcss ultra quality here to see how it looks it's it's a little bit um, softer than the FSR implementation here. I can notice that even though this is 75% resolution scale compared to 67% resolution scale on the FSR quality setting, this is ultra quality XCSS. It's not as pixelated though, so at least there's that, but it's still very, very far from what I saw with the LSS. The LSS is definitely quite a lot better here in Horizon Forbidden West. And now just to keep things fair, I'm gonna set this to quality and see... Okay, it becomes a little bit more pixelated, definitely, and even softer. It's just not a good look, in my opinion, guys. You could just sharpening, but it's just over sharpening things in that case if you decide to use it. So I wouldn't really use it anyways. Yeah, just 
use native resolution, that's definitely the way to go. All right, next up, let's try it at 1440p resolution. I'll restart the game to make sure that memory and stuff like that just reset completely, you know. And here we have it. Gorgeous 1440p on the 6700 XT, getting around 60 frames per second. Now I can notice the little spikes in the frame time graph a little bit more, because the frame rate is lower, I guess. And I'm going to start counting our FPS. Also, since it's very close to 60 FPS most of the time, that means that the capture card will have a little bit of an issue with this and it will get a lot of screen tearing. I'm sorry about that, but uh, this is the way to capture performance without any performance losses. If I was utilizing like OBS or uh, the software from AMD to record, we would lose a lot of FPS. And also I am using the 4K 60 Pro Mark II capture card from Elgato and it supposedly has VRR support, so there's that, but it doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I record with VRR to an SSD and uh, another PC, which is what I'm using here uh, to record, okay, it's not being recorded in the same machine, it, it just gets stuttery footage and it's completely unwatchable. Actually, today I am in a little bit of a hate mood on the capture card that I have because I have recorded this video, the 1080p and 1440p section already, um, and it recorded everything at 1080p, so the, the pixels on the captured footage were just completely messed up. It was like unreadable. Text was unreadable. The game looked like 480p. I... It... it just capture card problems. <laughs> Anyways, rent over, guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, performance here with the 6700 XT at 1440p is actually kind of the same as the 4060 was at 1080p resolution. Just let that sink in. 1440p is way higher of a resolution than 1080p, although it doesn't sound like it, you know, but it definitely is, guys. Okay, let's spike these guys over here. Come over here. Why are you running away from me? Why are you running? <laughs> That's the meme. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Shot in the ass. Let's go. There we go. We got her. Um, or him. I, I don't know. Actually, it's, it's a robot. Who cares? <laughs> Let's go. But yeah, 1440p is actually 78% higher of a resolution than 1080p in terms of pixel count. So the, the experience is quite different in terms of visuals. It looks really, really good here, very detailed. And on a 27 inch, it will look fantastic in this game since the TAA isn't really blurry or anything. It's gonna be a sharp image, super detailed, a lot of particle effects everywhere and so on. It's it's just a gorgeous game, guys, and even though we're dropping into the 50s, it's still playable, right? Because it's a single-player game, it's not like first-person, you don't need to be super accurate and stuff. And this is a demanding area, you know, the first, like, hour or so of the game, you're gonna be in a different area, which is a bit less intensive, you're probably gonna get, like, 10, 15 more FPS than what you're seeing right here. And by the end of the game, I've also been told that it is more intensive than this a little bit more intensive, so keep that in mind. It has volumetric clouds and stuff, and you're flying around. Uh, so it can drop more than what we're seeing right here, but I guess it's just it's a good benchmark. Now, will FSR 2 look good at 1440p resolution? That's the question. This is the first time that I'm trying FSR 2 at 1440p, and I can say it doesn't. It is still really noisy and pixelated around the, the alloy character moving there. Yeah, it's, it definitely looks like it's running at a low resolution in that regard. If you look in front of you, and especially at the distance, since things are more static there, they look great, okay? They kind of look the same as without FSR enabled. I forgot to count the FPS, so let's do it. Um, but yeah, if you look at closer things like the grass right next to you, you moving, it doesn't look good. And especially when you're fighting robots and stuff, it's going to be very fast and things are going to become very pixelated as well. Maybe on a smaller monitor you can get by with this, and especially if you add maybe motion blur to disguise the fact that the picture is becoming pixelated on moving things, then it's just going to become a blurry thing, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so not too bad, I guess, but 
yeah, for me, I don't like motion blur. I don't like pixelated things, so it just doesn't work very well. Um, gonna stop it there. It does get 60 plus FPS though, which is very impressive. So a good uplift right there, better than what we saw at 1080p at least. But let's see if XESS Ultra Quality also does the same thing. It's gonna be a little bit more intensive, of course, because it's 75% resolution scale, as I told you. Um, but hopefully it's going to be enough to put us above 60 FPS most of the time. And I'm actually going to increase the sharpness a little bit here using XCSS. As you can see, if I set it to 10, it looks super over sharpened. It's really ugly. But I think like two or three, yeah, I'm going to use three is a good option. It looks great to my eyes. It's kind of very similar to DLSS at the moment, guys. In terms of visual quality, the LSS is still a little bit better though, but yeah, not bad. Okay, let's start counting our FPS. Definitely a lot better than FSR2. Thank you, Intel, for XESS because it's actually looking really good. I think I could play like this, and I think I would play like this if high settings look a little bit worse than this, you know? If high settings look pretty much the same, just drop it down to high settings, play at native resolution still, and uh, have fun with that. But I think this is pretty solid of an experience. And again, especially if you have a smaller monitor at 27 inches, 1440p, it will look pretty insane. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's gonna be just slightly softer than native resolution is, but not to the point where it looks bad or terrible, you know? Also, it did dip down into the 50s there just by a little bit to like 58, I think, 57 FPS on the 1% lows. So it will still drop a little bit, 56. Ooh, this area is pretty intensive apparently. And I remembered that looking, oh God, God. every single time I see those lens flares, <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Um, but yeah, I think with the GTX 1050 Ti, or maybe it was with the RTX 4060, looking at these helmets <laughs> dropped our FPS the most. <laughs> this is the most intensive thing that I could do. And it's the same thing here with the 6700 XT. It drops to 51, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, 5 FPS improvement compared to native resolution is definitely welcomed here. I would take it at very high settings, not a problem. VRAM usage is also totally under control in this game. With 12 gigabytes, it's using 10 and a half gigs. And what about XESS quality? Let's take a quick look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Guys? Damn, this is good, actually. It looks a little bit worse, once again, not as much detail in the image compared to ultra quality, but uh, it does get the 60 plus, I think, almost all of the time. Let me just go over here to the gates. This is where it dropped the most. Uh, actually, no, uh, down there it dropped a little bit more. 60 FPS minimum there. Little stutters, man. Yeah, they are a little bit more annoying here at 1440p for sure. And over here, it's not dropping anymore, so... Okay, I think it's safe to say that with quality XCSS, if you are willing to make that trade-off in visual quality, you're gonna get 60 plus FPS. And finally, guys, I just restarted the game, and now we're playing... You guessed it. <laughs> at 4K using TAA and the very high settings preset still. All right, this looks absolutely insane right now. Okay, I've seen people saying, ah, oh, it's, it's not realistic at all. Why do you think this looks so good? It looks really good. Most people can agree that this looks really, really nice, even though it's not going for that very realistic look, right? Also, you can actually dive in this game. Yep, there we go. Good stuff. I, this is the second time that I'm diving, actually. And it looks really good, even underwater, guys. I'm in love with this game's graphics and uh, the performance as well. It's, it's really good. As you can see, it's getting 30 plus so far. Not bad. Looking in that direction, 32, 31. It's definitely going to dip here and there if you start uh, hitting robots and stuff like that. And also if we go to the city gates there. But, I mean, this is... 4K very high settings, the max preset basically, not max settings again. And it looks absolutely phenomenal right now. You could actually lock it to 30 FPS, overclock the card a little bit. Um, and over here, it didn't even dip to, to the 20s, so that, that's okay. <laughs> All right, I am liking this. It's like a console experience, a PS4 Pro experience, but with 10 times better graphics, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't really see the version on PS5. 
<laughs> so I can't really comment on the graphics of that thing. Also over here, 29 FPS, most intensive thing. So obviously, I wouldn't play like this unless I overclocked the card a little bit to achieve 30 FPS uh, flat all over the time. But I think the 1440p experience was much better anyways. Like 50 plus is definitely worth it over this, in my opinion. It just feels a bit too sluggish to me. Um, at 30 to 40 frames per second. Still playable, not saying that it isn't, but I wouldn't really do this myself. But hey, FSR 2 on quality might finally look really good at 4K resolution and... All right, I can still see some pixelation on the hair, guys, and the character as well running. I don't know why AMD doesn't focus as much on the quality of their upscaling. You know, I'd much rather have FSR looking like DLSS than FSR 3 with frame generation, you know, like uh, we see in uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I've tested that extensively as well, and it's just the upscaler itself just makes things look a bit ugly, in my opinion. But over here, it's not too bad. You know, if you're not really looking closely, and if you don't have a 42-inch monitor like I do, I doubt you can actually tell much of a difference. Oh boy, come on, get over here, get over here. Much better to move around like this with 40-ish FPS, like 40 plus all of the time, than it was with the 30 plus FPS all of the time, or 29 plus, I guess. <laughs> come on, come on, show me your yellow thing. There we go, dead boy over there. Can I kill these guys? There are a bunch of them. You know what? I'm gonna do this, guys. Oh, beautiful wind sweater again. Oh, boy. Come on. There we go. Fighting the bastards. Come on. Come on, die. There we go. Again, little stutters are still there every once in a while, but it's not really a problem. And with these settings, VRAM is still not maxing out and not swapping into RAM, which is pretty impressive in my opinion, you know? 12 gigabytes are enough for 4K very high settings, apparently, whereas the 8 gigabytes on the 4060 Ti and 4060 are definitely not enough. Even though, like, the 4060 Ti is actually faster in raw performance than this, the 8 gigs will be a limitation and you'll be stuck to 1080p if you want to play with very high settings. And even then, it goes over 8 gigabytes sometimes. So, yeah, if you're fancying some 4K, this is actually pretty doable, guys. I'm I'm enjoying the experience. Now, let's use XESS quality now to see how it performs. Okay, it seems like it's a little bit more intensive than FSR 2 was. And it's also softer. You know what? At 4K resolution, I think I like FSR better. Because, yes, it becomes a little bit pixelated in some areas, but it is not soft, and this is quite a bit softer than native resolution here, so I can definitely notice the softness issue. At least to my eyes, this is all personal preference, of course. That's why I test so many settings and resolutions and upscalers and so on, so you guys choose whatever you want and whatever you like and see the performance and whatever settings you like to use. Um, but yeah, I'm just commenting here, saying my opinion, and I would go with FSR2 <laughs> at 4K, but XCSS at the other resolutions. So let's stop it there. Okay, that's it for the very high settings. I'm gonna turn it down a notch to high and we'll play it like that for a little bit. Okay, I just restarted the game to reset VRAM and RAM utilizations. We're playing at 1080p now using, well, let me just turn this off, okay. No XESS or FSR and the high settings preset this time. Okay, going from 4K, even with upscaling back to 1080p feels a little bit meh, not gonna lie. I don't like this. Little frame time spikes are still there, so it indicates that it's just some other issue. It's not like due to VRAM usages, RAM usages and stuff like that. It's weird. Maybe it's just the game, maybe it's the drivers. I, I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to really uh, continue mentioning it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter much to the gameplay experience anyways. And I have tried like reinstalling drivers. I always use DDU if you're wondering as well. And it just kept happening, so... Yeah, obviously the textures are a little bit worse, but they're still very good looking. And you can see the RAM utilization, or VRAM utilization actually, going up from 8 gigabytes right now. Now the Nvidia GPUs usually use a little bit lower VRAM, oh boy, than AMD GPUs do. Oh, okay, no ammo, no ammo. I need to craft, 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 come on, there we go, there we go. My God, stop with the balls. Oh, 
Stop giving me blue ball. What? <laughs> but yeah, as I was saying, the NVIDIA GPUs tend to utilize a little bit less VRAM, so 8 gigabyte uh, on NVIDIA cards will actually be playable here and it won't really saturate the frame buffer, just as I saw with the RTX 4060, but on AMD GPUs, well, maybe like an RX 6600 XT would start swapping some things into the RAM, because again, they, they just use two, three hundred megabytes more uh, of VRAM than NVIDIA cards. I'm gonna skip FSR, there's no point of testing that right now, and I'm gonna do 1440p resolution and restart just because it's good practice, I guess. All right, we're back here, guys, getting 60-ish frames per second, but unfortunately, it's kind of the same as we've seen previously. It still dips down into the 50s and, like, mid-50s as well. Yeah, there's not much to it comparing very high to high settings, both in visuals and in performance as well. Over here, it still dips down into the lower uh, 50s or actually mid 50s. Maybe on very high settings, it dipped down into the lower 50s. But no one is it's kind of the same experience, really. I think I would just stick to the very high settings preset on the 6700 XT. Enjoy the maximum visuals, close to maximum visuals in this game. All right, let's fight some Bobots once again. Here we go. This one is dead already. I guess it stays more often in the 60s than in the 50s compared to uh, the very high settings, which makes sense, of course. That was very, very close to 60 FPS as well. But it's only by, like, 2 to 3, maybe 5 FPS maximum. It's not a big difference, once again. I would just take the extra fidelity. If it was a difference of 10 FPS, at least, I would argue that maybe I would play on high settings because we'd be above 60 FPS all of the time if that was the case. But since it still drops into the 50s, well, yeah, just enjoy it at very high. That's my take on it, I think. So down to personal preference, of course, if you prefer the little extra smoothness coming from 64 FPS average instead of like 60 or 61, whatever we got previously, 59 maybe. Um, yeah, go ahead, do it. That's why I'm showing it to you on high settings as well. Let's check it out with XCSS Ultra Quality. Maybe now this can actually get 60+. plus. Okay, yeah, quite a lot softer once again. I can definitely notice that right away. <laughs> wow, but it is touching like 70 frames per second and getting 69 FPS on average, which is the most important thing. If this happens to end the little benchmark run with 69 FPS on average, then this is actually the perfect experience. <laughs> but as you can see, it still dips down into the 50s. It's ultra quality XCSS though, so there's that. But again, you already know my thoughts about FSR. I wouldn't use it at 1440p and quality XCSS. Well, it just becomes a little bit too soft, maybe. And over here, yep, 64. Not dropping anymore into the 50s around here. And if you remember, we got like 51 or 52 here. Looking at this guy's helmet, Bob's helmet. And now we're getting 53. Holy crap, dude. You gotta be joking. How is your helmet so intensive? And finally, guys, 4K resolution using TAA high settings preset. Let's go back to the game. So previously, if you remember on very high settings, it dipped down to 29 frames per second sometimes. And I'm hoping that the drop from a very high to high will put us above 30 FPS the entire time, at least in this section of the game. Let's see. Over here, not bad. Okay, 31. That's promising, guys. <laughs> I guess it is going to stay above 30. And again, you can overclock the card a little bit, push it further and achieve like 3, 4 more FPS. Well, like... 5 to 10% more performance. Um, so there's that. I, I think I would actually do that at 4K resolution. Maybe even at 1440p to achieve 60 FPS more often as well. Let's see over here. It was pretty intensive previously and it dropped to 29. Oh no, it still drops to 29. It's almost the same. Are you serious? Obviously, some things are better like VRAM usage and stuff, but... The FPS are almost the same as they were before. And finally, FSR 2.2 on quality and high settings. And we already know it's, it's going to be kind of the same thing, right? Start counting our FPS. Let's go back to the intensive little spot there, looking in that direction. 
getting 40s. Also, I'm not testing like performance XESS here at 4K or FSR because it just looks bad, <laughs> right? And over here, it's getting like 40s, 43 right there. Not bad. Coming from 30 FPS and 29 to 40 plus all of the time is actually really good. Also, I think this game has a memory leak issue. Some people have told me that, at least in the comments. And if you're worried that your VRAM is going to fill up at the very high settings and 4K resolution, maybe this is a better option, right? Like high settings, even though it gives you similar performance, it eats like one and a half gigabytes less. So you're just gonna have a little bit more breathing room when it comes to VRAM here and VRAM utilization. So not terrible, right? I wouldn't really drop it down to the medium settings. You could, it's still going to look all right, especially if you keep the textures on high. And it's probably going to achieve like 60 FPS here at 4K with FSR quality. So if you require that, go ahead and do that. Uh, it will also get 60 plus FPS at 1440p native resolution with medium settings so that's also an option but i feel like high settings in this game is so beautiful that you just gotta enjoy it okay <laughs> so that's my take on it i'll be back with another gpu test very soon i'll catch you then love you all Bye bye